My name's Genevieve, and I'm going to read you a story. Today, the story I'm going to read you is Amelia and Eleanor Go for a Ride. It's by Pam Munoz Ryan, pictures by Brian Selznick. It's a fun word. Um, so the first picture is of an airplane. <clears throat> Whoa, Amelia and Eleanor go for a ride. It's based on a true story. So this is pretty exciting. <clears throat> uh, to Lisa, Tanya, and Christina in loving memory of Socorro Moniz Kimball and their courageous mother, PMR. That's the lady who wrote the book. And then to Tracy Mack from BS, who was the person that did the art. Okay, ready? <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me, my throat's a little dry. Amelia and Eleanor were birds of a feather. Eleanor was outspoken and determined. <clears throat> so was Amelia. Amelia was daring, liked to try things other women wouldn't even consider. Eleanor was the same. So when Eleanor discovered that her friend Amelia was coming to town to give a speech, she naturally said, Bring your husband and come to dinner at my house. You can even sleep over. Doesn't that sound fun? When friends come and stay. These are the ladies. Um, so, it wasn't unusual for two friends to get together, but Eleanor was Eleanor Roosevelt, the first lady of the United States who lived in the White House with her husband, Pre President Franklin Roosevelt. Um, Amelia was Amelia Earhart, the celebrated avi aviator who was the first female pilot to fly solo across the Atlantic Ocean. Wow. Right? Can you imagine? And when two of the most famous and adventurous women in the world got together, something exciting was bound to happen. Okay. Washington, D.C. So in the trees, you see those flowers, those are the cherry blossoms. <clears throat> and every spring, they blossom and they're pink and they're beautiful. But the trees themselves are everywhere, all over Washington, D.C. So you're like inside this beautiful smelling and looking garden when, it, um, when you're there. Okay, so here's the first picture. See, it's Amelia and her husband, I think. Um, <clears throat> In a guest room at the White House, Amelia and her husband, GP, dressed for dinner. Amelia pulled on the long white evening gloves that were so different from the ones she sometimes wore while flying. Many people didn't understand why a woman would want to risk her life in a plane, but Amelia had said it, was, had said it more than once. It's for the fun of it. Besides, she loved the feeling of independence she had when she was in the cockpit. She carefully folded a gift for Eleanor, a silk scarf that matched her own. The powder blue with streaks of indigo reminded Amelia of the morning sky. That's so nice. She's going to our friend's house for dinner and she brought her present. Now, this is Eleanor and behind her, this is her husband, Frank, President Franklin Roosevelt. <clears throat> Meanwhile, Make sure you can see it. Meanwhile, Eleanor dressed for dinner too. Her brother, Hall, would be escorting her this evening because the president had a meeting to attend. But Eleanor was used to that. She pulled on the long white evening gloves that were so different from the ones she wore while driving. When she peeked out the window at the brand new car that had just been delivered that afternoon, she couldn't wait to drive it. Many people thought it was too bold and dangerous for a woman to drive a car, especially the first lady of the United States. But Eleanor always gave the same answer. It's a practical. That's all. Besides, she loved the feeling of independence she had when she was behind the wheel. Okay, so here's the White House. We're looking in the window. See if they're having dinner. Okay, let's see what the, let's see what the words say. Um, it was a brisk and cloudless April evening. The guests had gathered in the red room and the table looked elegant, as even small dinner parties at the White House can be. Eleanor and Hall greeted Amelia and GP, as well as several reporters and a photographer. 
Amelia gave Eleanor the scarf. I love it, Eleanor exclaimed. It's just like yours. That's cool, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, in case you don't know, the White House is where the president lives. So here we are in the red room, eating some dinner. <clears throat> um, dinner started with George Washington's crab chowder. This is delicious, said Amelia. But if soup at the White House has such a fancy name, what will dessert be called? <laughs> Perhaps Abraham Lincoln's pinch cobbler, or maybe Thomas Jefferson's custard? They laughed as everyone took turns guessing. By the time they got to the roast duck, the conversations had turned to flying. Mrs. Roosevelt had just received her student pilot's license, said one of the reporters. Amelia wasn't surprised. She had been the one to encourage Eleanor. She knew her friend could do anything she set her mind to. I'll teach you myself, offered Amelia. I accept. Tell us, Amelia. What's it like to fly at night in the dark? Everyone at the table leaned closer to hear. Very few people in the whole world had ever flown at night, and Amelia was one of them. Amelia's eyes sparkled. The stars glitter all about and seem close enough to touch. At higher elevations, the clouds below shine white with dark islands where the night sea shows through. I've seen the planet Venus setting on the horizon, and I've circled cities of twinkling light. And the capital city at night, asked Eleanor. There's no describing it, said Amelia. You'll just have to experience it on a clear night when you can see forever. Why, we should go tonight. We could fly the loop to Baltimore and back in no time. The Secret Service men protested. This hasn't been approved. Nonsense, said Eleanor. If Amelia Earhart can fly solo across the Atlantic Ocean, I can certainly take a short flight to Baltimore and back. Before dessert could be served, Amelia had called Eastern Air Transport and arranged a flight. Okay. Within the hour, Amelia and Eleanor boarded the Curtis Condor twin motor airplane. For a moment, both women looked up at the mysterious night sky. Then without changing her gloves, Amelia slipped into the cockpit and took the wheel. The plane rolled down the runway faster and faster. Lights from the airship flashed in front of them and they lifted into the dark. How amazing it is to see a girl in a white evening dress and high heeled shoes flying a plane, Eleanor said. Mia laughed as she made a wide sweep over Washington, D.C. and turned, all, turned off all the lights in the plane. Out the window, the Potomac River glistened with moonshine. The Capitol dome reflected with a soft golden halo. The enormous light drenched monuments looked like tiny miniatures. Soon the peaceful countryside gave way to shadowy woodlands. The Chesapeake Bay became a meandering outline on the horizon, and even though they knew it wasn't so, it seemed as if the plane crawled slowly through the starstruck space. Eleanor marveled. It's like, it's like sitting on top of the world. <clears throat> Here is what it looked like from the plane. Oh, it's just magic. <clears throat> As the Secret Service agents drove them slowly back to the White House, Amelia and Eleanor agreed that there was nothing quite as exciting as flying. 
what could compare? Well, they admitted maybe the closest thing would be driving in a fast car on a straightaway road with a still breeze blowing against your face. Arm's length, they walked up the steps to the White House. Eleanor whispered something to Amelia, and then they hesitated, letting the rest of the group walk ahead of them. Are you coming inside, Mrs. Roosevelt? Someone asked. But by then, they had wrapped their silk scarves around their necks and were hurrying towards Eleanor's new car. <laughs> Without changing her gloves, Eleanor quickly slipped into the driver's seat and took her turn at the wheel. With the wind in their hair and the brisk air stinging their cheeks, they flew down the road. And after they had taken a ride about the city streets of Washington, D.C., they finally headed back to the White House. Look how happy they are. For dessert. <laughs> That's why they rushed home. For dessert. Eleanor Roosevelt's pink clouds on angel food cake. Mm. Look how happy these friends are. They got to show each other their special talents. The end. And here's the recipe, which... I think I should probably put in the comments. That sounds great. Give me something to do. And the pink clouds are whipped cream and strawberries. That's cool. The end. The end. And then this is the author's note because a little more history. But this is, that's what happened. And the date was April 20th, 1933. See, there they are in real life with their evening gowns and their gloves. This must be right before they took off. Um, the end. So thank you for joining me. I love this book, reading great books about great ladies. It's pretty awesome. And this was set um, in the early 30s and it was a very different time. These bold ladies changed the world and history. So, um, thank you. My name's Genevieve. Thank you for joining me for a story today. Today I read Amelia and Eleanor Go for a Ride by Pam You Knows Ryan, pictures by Brian Selznick. Thank you for joining me. Be good for your grown-ups. Be good to your grown-ups. Be good to you and be good for you. And most importantly, be excellent for each other. Thank you. Bye.